thanks for joining us today for uh, the session at um, the DPS conference. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at uh, monitoring for Azure SQL. Uh, my name is Alendo Mal. I'm a program manager with the Azure SQL engineering team. And joining, to, joining me today is uh, Mara. Hi, everyone. So my name is Mara Steyo, and I'm also a program manager in the Azure SQL team. Thanks for joining us today. Fantastic. So the first thing we're going to look at today is uh, kind of what is monitoring. So sort of this, this three pieces we'll look at today. We're going to look at kind of what is monitoring, what is monitoring traditionally, um, you know, within the SQL environment. Uh, and then when moving over to Azure, sort of what are the tools that are available? And Mara will walk you through sort of what are the solutions that are available. And then right at the end of the session, we will be showing you some of the... Um, new things that we're working on. So some of the exciting products that we're working on in the monitoring space uh, that you can look forward to sort of uh, going forward. So traditionally, before we start sort of looking at uh, what the traditional monitoring solutions are, let's have a look at what the Azure SQL deployment stack actually looks like. Um, so everyone here should be very familiar with SQL Server. You know, that's traditional SQL Server that you install on top of your own infrastructure. Now, within the Azure world, you can do exactly the same thing. Um, you can run SQL Server on top of a virtual machine uh, that is hosted by Microsoft in one of our data centers uh, in Azure. And essentially, uh, that experience that you have there is very similar to what you would have in your own data center today uh, running SQL Server. That's a virtual machine running on top of physical infrastructure. It has disks. And you, as the end consumer of that, has to manage that entire stack so you have to manage the os you have to manage the installations of sql the updates of windows or linux um, and sql itself as well right um and that's a very traditional setup that most people are very familiar with uh, that's the one that's been around for sql for a very long time the sort of second choice that you have is is managed instances. Now, managed instances is very similar to uh, virtual machines. The only major difference here being is, is that managed instances, you start moving towards the platform as a service offering. So what you're basically getting there is, is you're getting a installation of SQL that is managed by Microsoft. All the infrastructure is managed, all the underlying sort of OS things, uh, the, the versions of SQL, all of that we manage for you. Uh, these deployments come with built-in high availability. Uh, there's an SLA for uptime. So really, you start moving away from this world where you have full control over the OS and full control over the host uh, into a world where uh, pretty much you just have to use the database, right? And you have to worry about what's going on in the databases and in the instances, not necessarily everything around them. And then the very last one is... Um, the Azure SQL databases, which is actually the oldest one out of the the between it and managed instance. And basically all that that is, is the major difference here is just the scope of the deployment and how much more of that deployment is actually managed by Microsoft. So within managed instances, you get access to an entire instance level of SQL, uh, where Azure SQL database is really that. It's just a single database. Um, and you have full access into that database, but you have no control over the instance level settings. You have no control over um, the underlying host or the underlying OS or anything like that. Microsoft will manage all of that for you. Now, the reason this is important is because it it there is a lot of um, sort of similarities here between uh, the different deployment options you have and sort of the, the some of the the gotchas that exist when it comes to monitoring all of them. So if we look at traditional SQL, so SQL running on premise today, uh, if you install it in your own data center, if you install SQL on top of a virtual machine, what does monitoring in that environment really look like? So there's a, there's a number of things that customers look for in products. Uh, there's a number of things that sort of our customers expect products to do in this space. Um, and I guess one of the very first things that you sort of run into here is you run into this concept of you have to be able to m manage and monitor the host as well as the os right so when we say host and os it's essentially the infrastructure plus the operating system that sql is running on top of so that's one piece and there's a whole bunch of telemetry that comes out for that and that's things like you know 
uh, disk usage, CPU percentage, because in, an, in a traditional SQL deployment environment, you've got to understand SQL is running in an environment where it is share, sharing resources with a lot of other applications. So the OS takes some, uh, if there are other apps running on that machine, then they take up some of the resources as well. So you have to be able to, you know, isolate SQL's portions out of the host in the OS. Then, of course, very important as well is the network monitoring. So, you know, it's depending on how you've built applications and how you access databases. Generally speaking, a lot of SQL databases get accessed remotely. So I access from my laptop into a database that, that sits somewhere else. So there has there's some type of network traffic that takes place here. Then you have your application tier, which is sort of the 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 piece that everyone cares about, right? Like what is running on top of this database? If you speak to an end user, these databases are slow. Uh, I mean, their application is slow because the database is slow or storage is slow or something like that. So being able to monitor that application tier is also very important. Now, the piece here that that sort of most of you would be familiar with is the monitoring of SQL Server itself, right? And SQL has a number of uh, sort of very robust uh, existing features that allow you to monitor every aspect of SQL. That's everything from, you know, perf counters, which uh, kind of correlate through to metrics in Azure today. You have logs, which are, you know, more descriptive around what exactly took place. Um, and then X events, which are triggered when something goes wrong. So a perf counter is really just a continuous measurement of something. So it's something like, you know, uh, percentage CPU utilized or, you know, amount of CPU utilized, amount of disk used, the number of IOs, things like that. That's really where what sits in your perf counters. Uh, logs, as I said, are a lot more descriptive in nature. Uh, and then X events are based off of when something happens, I want to report on it. Now, the trick with monitoring traditionally is monitoring these things in isolation is 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 really not all that difficult um you know gathering this information is not all that difficult but the pieces that are very hard here are like how do i correlate these data sets with each other so that i can start making meaning of them my sql server is slow this query is running long why is it running long well because something is wrong on the disk now that correlation between those two pieces is really where sort of a lot of the value lives here. Um, and being able to do those correlations is really um, what a lot of people see as being uh, the fundamentals to sort of a good monitoring solution is, is being having the ability to be able to sort of infer something uh, based off what's happening in, in a different environment, if you want. Then on top of that, you need to have the functionality to graph and visualize these things, right? Because um, if you look at sort of what goes on in SQL and sometimes within the host and the OS, it's, it's usually a point in time event that took place. Like I had a CPU spike for five seconds, but if I wasn't looking at it over those five seconds, I can miss that spike. So graphing and visualizing something as a, as a, um, as a time series event becomes very important. So I want to be able to see how are my trends changing, um, what is changing within my system as a function of a of time really and then alerting this is probably the most important one uh, that we see here is you know uh, no one that i know no one that serves in the dba role at least sits and watches a monitoring screen 24 7 right they most of them just sort of have uh systems that will alert them when something goes wrong so these alerts the ability to tell you for example, your CPU is running at 95% for the last three minutes. You need to go have a look at it. Those type of alerting form part of a end-to-end -end monitoring solution. And then sort of more recently than that, we've seen kind of this growth of intelligent pieces like around, I want to do more intelligence, right? Like what can I do in my system to make it perform better? Um, and that takes multiple flavors as well. That could be things like auto RCA, like how do I automatically mitigate problems in my environment uh, without necessarily 
um, having to do all the deep diving, right? So there are some very common patterns that you can look for. And Azure SQL does this stuff uh, all the time, right? And when we do some of the demos later on, I'm happy I'll walk through some of these scenarios about how Azure SQL really br brings some of those intelligent pieces to help customers solve some of the more common issues in the environment. Um, and then automation. Automation is very important in that, you know, understanding that something is wrong is one piece of it. But do you want, if you were, if you were looking after a data estate that had 10,000 databases in it, do you want to be the person that has to go and, and actually implement these changes one at a time across 10,000 databases? So how do you automate these kind of functions? Um, and automation also takes a different side to it around, you know, if something comes up, like if an alert comes up and it's a fairly critical alert, how can I automate the response to that? Can I automatically go and create a ticket? Can I automatically spawn an RCA out of that? So a lot of these things are sort of what we're seeing. Our third party vendors are doing extremely well in the monitoring space. Um, you know, they have some very robust systems that can pick up some very advanced scenarios. Um, and that's really where customers are seeing the value, right? Is sort of those last four bullet points around uh, automating and the intelligence within their monitoring environments. Oh, I seem to have minimized. Um, so let me run you through a scenario, and I'm pretty sure most people here can, can sort of relate to this. And, and this is why monitoring, whether it's traditionally run on your own infrastructure or whether in Azure, this is important, uh, kind of how these scenarios play out. So you have a, a set of end users that are using this application. And as any user using any application, they'll all tell you that their application is the most important application and it's business critical and it's mission critical. And it's, you know, the whole company relies on this app working all the time. Now I'm sure for a fair amount of applications out there, this is true, but for a lot of applications, it's maybe not so true. Um, and then what happens is, is all of a sudden this application starts slowing down. So what's the first thing they do? They contact IT. And the IT department happens to know that this database is running on top of a database. I mean, this application is connected to a database and runs on top of this database. So immediately they go and they contact one of the DBAs. The DBA will then go, he'll look at his database and he will determine that nothing on his side is actually running slow at all. So what does he do? He starts digging a bit deeper. He starts looking at storage. He tries to see if perhaps uh, things are slow because the storage layer is slow. He then looks somewhere else and he goes, okay, I've determined storage is potentially not the problem. Let me look at the infrastructure. Is it networking related? What's the issue? So he then goes and sort of digs a bit deeper. But essentially all that that does is it just lands up involving different people within this enterprise. So now all of a sudden you have a, a storage admin and you have an infrastructure admin that get involved in the scenario. And, you know, as is kind of sometimes the tradition in, in, in bigger organizations, everyone says it's not their fault. The DBA will say it's not his database. The storage guy will say it's not his storage. And they'll go back to the customer and they'll pretty much say nothing on our side is, the, is, is at fault. But really the only thing that gets solved in that is kind of everyone gets upset, right? And that the customer still hasn't resolved their issues. Um, and you sort of have made enemies out of storage admins and uh, infrastructure admins as you kind of move along. And that's kind of your worst case scenario because now things are escalating. Uh, your end users are still not having a good experience on their application. And everyone is upset with everyone because storage is insisting that it's not their storage layer. The infrastructure guys are insisting it's not theirs. And the DBAs are saying their database is running fine. And then nine out of 10 times what lands up happening is it turns out the end user, um, you know, their son was downloading the latest uh, like update for Fortnite or something. And they were actually lagging before they hit the application. Now, these kind of problems are very common, right? But you see the, the problem here is, is you had to go through this entire process of like figuring out with storage and figuring out with infrastructure and with the, the end user getting upset that, you know, in fact, the problem actually lived somewhere else altogether. Now, this is a very similar sort of um, issue that we have 
that we face uh, within the Azure space, right? In that, you know, Azure is an extremely complex uh, ecosystem with millions and millions of machines running and cores running, and it's a very big and complex infrastructure. So kind of Azure has had to sort of look at some of these things in a very different way um, and sort of what we've come up with. And I'm going to sort of cover some of the sort of the limitations and some of the current expectations when it comes to monitoring within the Azure platform. And then I'll hand over to Mara to cover some of the uh, solutions that are currently available. So today within Azure, there's, there's this, um, as I mentioned in the beginning, there's kind of this trade-off between how much of the management of your infrastructure and OS you want to hand over to Microsoft. So the whole like PaaS versus IaaS thing, um, that determines how much information customers get access to, right? So obviously within a within a VM world, within the IaaS world, you have access to things like Perfmon and all of these, the traditional tools that you're used to. But within the PaaS world, you really don't get those choices, right? Um, latency becomes a problem here you can imagine for an infrastructure the size of ours across you know 60 plus data centers in the world our ability to ingest and present data at sometimes you know sub second kind of uh, response times which is what some customers expect uh, for certain workloads becomes very difficult um, the frequency at which we collect certain data, right? As I as I mentioned earlier, not all data, not all telemetry is born equal, right? Some telemetry is very easy, uh, transports easy. It's it's just a metric, so it's a continuous numeric number with a dimension attached to it. Some is very difficult. Some is a physical log file stored on a disk somewhere that you have to move around to be able to interrogate. Um, we have this concept of you know what is the the front end versus the back end thing. So. Again, in the PaaS world, um, you as the end user shouldn't have to care about uh, monitoring the OS and monitoring the host that you run on. But us as Microsoft, who are, who are offering you this service to run on top of our platform, we do care. We care a lot about that OS and that host and how well they uh, how well they are um, sort of managing within the environment, how well they are managing your workload. So. There is this like disparity between you know what we have access to, what you get access to, um, and that's that's an Azure thing, right? Uh, this concept of variety within our deployment types is another difficult one. Uh, if you sort of think back to what I said earlier about uh, VM versus sort of managed instance, um, even within that variety, or if you take it to an even further extreme, if you look at VM versus SQL database. If the scope of your access is scoped down to a single database within Azure, the DMVs that you have access to have to be scoped to a single database. The telemetry you get access to is scoped to that single database, not the entire instance. So even there, you have a disparity in what data becomes available to you. Um, traditionally within Azure, it, it, there hasn't been a lot of customizable um, dashboarding and sort of experiences where customers can really dig into this data and build their own things. Um, so th a lot of the solutions that we offer are fit for purpose. Um, and then just again, like, I mean, we run millions and millions of databases uh, within Azure. Uh, it's a very big environment. And we've sort of started seeing the rise of these, what we call hyper customers, customers that are running, you know, hundreds and thousands of databases uh, inside of Azure, right? So a platform that can deal with, you know, these largest of large customers, but also with the complexity of these estates uh, that comes with it, right? So these are traditionally things that, you know, Azure Azure has tried to deal with. Um, some of them have limitations today. It's all very well documented around how you can do this, but, but really it is something that um, from a SQL perspective could, uh, could be much better. So the last kind of thing I'll, I'll cover is, um, you know, we, I, we sort of break it up into these five buckets around what do we consider to be um, a, a successful monitoring tool uh, within Azure. And really what, we've, what we came down to is, is there's these sort of five major points that we, um, uh, that we sort of focus on here. And it's all around, A, the source. So where do you get data from and how do you do that and how consistently can you get that data, right? And the source 
shouldn't have any impact on any of the following, uh, any of the other criteria, right? So if I'm pulling data from managed instance or from SQLDB or from infrastructure, uh, that experience down the chain should be exactly the same for the customer. It shouldn't change. Um, what we collect from a data perspective, right, should be consistent. So if you're used to seeing a specific piece of telemetry or metrics from managed instance, you should expect to be able to see that same thing for single database or for elastic pools or, you know, for any of the other deployment types. Where you store that data becomes very important, right? Because the only reason you're gathering this telemetry data is because you are able to view trends. You want to be able to deal with problems. You want to be able to see regressions in workloads. So you need a place where you can interrogate this data successfully. Um, and then sort of the last two very similar, but the consumption of that data. So how do you as an end user consume the data? Do you build alerts on top of it? Uh, do you view it through a dashboard? What is that consumption model for you uh, for that data that is meaningful and adds value to what you do? And then just the very last one is the packaging piece. Now, this is important, right? Like, as I said, there are customers out there that are sitting with hundreds and thousands of databases in Azure. Deploying a solution one database at a time is not feasible for some of these customers. So there needs to be a way that you can package this up. You can sort of uh, manage these environments at a higher level so that customers don't have to worry about these small sort of minutia problems uh, with like deploying individual things per database. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Mara and she's going to run you through sort of what are the current options uh, within the Azure platform. Great. Thank you, Alan. So now I'm going to go through some of the current solutions that we have across two key dimensions. So here we can see that first we'll go through through the Azure Monitor pipeline. So in this case, the monitoring, the telemetry is, is built at the back end and there is no tax on the database performance. Uh, some of the monitoring solutions relying on this type of telemetry are Azure Monitor, Azure SQL, SQL Analytics. Uh, in this case, it is possible to stream the database monitoring telemetry to event hubs, Azure Storage for custom integrations. On the other side, uh, the other way to obtain telemetry for monitoring is using uh, DMD querying of system views, which has some text on the database performance depending on how often data is pulled from a database, and uh, also using extended events, which Alan was talking about, which use the Azure storage as an intermediary to strong event data. So many non-Azure solutions rely on this type of telemetry collection. Some examples would be Scrum and the management pack for managed instance, Telegraph and Grafana, open source solution, the SQL Server Management Studio tool, and other third-party solutions that we'll discuss a bit later. For now, let's dig deeper into the Azure monitoring solutions in the Azure portal. So as you can see here, we have four main types of statistics collected. First, we have alerts, which allow you to simply create rules that identify and address issues when some important conditions that you, you as the user set are found in your monitoring data. Then we have metrics, which are series of measured values and counts collected and stored over time. They can be either standard or custom. Third of all, we have diagnostic settings, and these allow us to configure streaming expert of platform logs and metrics for a, for a resource. For example, errors, timeouts, blocks, and you can send this to the destination of your choice. Some options would be event hubs, log analytics, storage account, and lastly, we have logs. So we can collect log data from a variety of sources, um, including resources in Azure Monitor, agents running in virtual machines, and we can send this data to a, to a log analytics workspace where you can perform some custo queries for more complex data analysis. So going a bit in more depth on the alert side, so alerts proactively notify you when issues are found within your infrastructure or your application using using your monitoring data in Azure Monitor. So they allow you to identify, address issues before the users of your systems notice them. And there are four main steps that you have to take in 
setting up a new alert goal. So first of all, you would pick the target for the alert, uh, depending on where it's located, on which subscription ID, resource group, and so on. Afterwards, you select a signal from the available signals for that target. It's really cool that you already have a list of available signals that are automatically filtered based on the target resource that you selected in the previous step. And overall, there are two types of signals. You can have metrics, such as data space allocated, DTU percentage, and activity logs, such as creating, updating, deleting um, Azure SQL database. Afterwards, you specify the logic to be applied to that data from, from the signal. So based on, based on the target, you're guided to defining the logic of the alert tool automatically. For instance, if you selected data space allocated as the signal, the condition could be you can set it whenever it's higher than a threshold value, you, you, an action will, will occur. And lastly, the action is basically what happens when that rule is triggered. It can send an email to the user, it can send an SMS, and many other options. You can define the action yourself. So here in this slide, you can see a view of all alerts set up for a set of resources. And um, so you can view either a list of individual alerts or a list of the smart groups that contains the alert. It's worth noting that a smart group is an aggregation, basically, of alerts based on machine learning algorithms. So moving onwards to metrics. So very briefly, metrics are just numerical values that describe some aspect of a system at a particular point in time. So these metrics can be arc and are collected at regular intervals. So as you can see here in the slide, you use the resource picker to select the resource for which you want to see the metric. If you open the metrics blade within the resource, then the resource is obviously pre-selected. For some resources afterwards, you must pick a namespace. Uh, a namespace is just a way to organize metrics so that you can easily find them. For example, storage accounts have separate namespaces for storing files, tables, blobs, few metrics, and many resources types only have one namespace. Moving onwards, then you select a metric from the list of available metrics. You can have CPU percentage, data IO percentage, and so on. And optionally, finally, you can also change the metric aggregation to view minimum, maximum, average values of the metrics throughout time. And now to, to better understand how Azure SQL metrics work, we'll hand, I'll hand it over to Ellen to, to do a demo. Um, yeah, so let me just, I'm going to quickly just run through metrics. So what you'll see here is um, this is the Azure monitor. Um, all customers get access to this. Metrics are sort of default telemetry that we expose for all databases. Uh, but you can see here that from the Azure monitor, you actually have access to a bunch of things, right? So apart from metrics, which as Mara mentioned, are continuous uh, numeric values, uh, that have uh, dimensions attached to them. Uh, you also have things like your activity logs, so you can monitor, you know, when people are creating resources. Has someone created a new database? Have they dropped a database? What's going on there? Um, you can create your alerts from here. Uh, logs, again, that's just the collection of logs, so slightly different from metrics. And then I think a very important one that a lot of people ask, ask us about all the time is service health. So, Essentially, what service health is, is whenever there is a uh, a problem with a service or with one of the underlying infrastructures that your database runs on top, uh, we can alert within service health to let all our customers know. And what what we see commonly happen is, is customers will go create sort of actions off the back of these uh, service alerts um, so that they can get notified whenever this happens or they can try automatically remediate these things when something happens. But right now, we're just going to quickly have a look at some of the metrics that are available. So you'll see here straight from the metrics blade, I have two ways of accessing this. I can either access this like I have now through the Azure Monitor portion of the Azure portal, or I can do this from an individual database. There's a metrics button that will bring me to the same window, and it will automatically have set the scope to that database that I have selected. But for the purpose of this, I'm just going to select... Um, one of the databases that we have and here you can choose which service you want to manage so i want to see azure sql uh, and i'm going to just look at uh us west 2 and then i can come and i can view again very simple things like i can see you know how much cpu percentage is being used across all my databases 
which is a very nice view to see as a function of time again you know here i can see very clearly that this database had a huge spike you know around the 5 a.m or actually earlier than that it was more around the sort of 2 3 a.m period last night and that's something i would like to investigate i need to understand what that is right but you see this is kind of where you know metrics have their limitations because that's the extent of the insights that I can get from this is I, I can see that there was a spike. I can even have an alert that notified me that the spike had taken place, but I don't, I have no additional information to show me, you know, what's that next click down? What's that next set of information that will help me to try and isolate what caused the spike. Um, but again, all the metrics that you see here available to all customers for all deployment types. So, sort of we encourage people to use these as often as possible to create sort of alerts and and some very basic checks that you can do from here um in your own environment and with that back to mara great thank you that's very helpful so now let's move on next to diagnostic settings the third uh, the third option so overall we configure these uh, settings to send platform metrics and platform logs to different destinations Something that is worth noting is that a single diagnostic setting can define no more than one of each of the destinations. So if you want to send data to more than one of particular destination types, for example, for example, two different log analytics workspaces, then you have to create multiple settings. And each resource can have up to five diagnostic settings. So as you can see here, we have three main types of destinations where you can send platform metrics and logs. So uh, you have log analytics workspace where metrics and logs are analyzed with some other monitoring data collected by Azure Monitor. Then you have event hubs, which allows us to, to stream data to external systems and other log analytics solutions. And lastly, there is Azure storage account, which is very useful for auditing, static analysis, backup, and compared to Azure Monitor logs and log analytics workspace, Azure storage is less expensive and logs can be kept there indefinitely. So overall, any destination for the diagnostic settings must be created before setting up the diagnostic setting itself. And the destination does not have to be in the same subscription as the resource sending logs, as long as the user who configures the setting has appropriate RBAC access to, to both of the subscriptions. So here you can see a very quick example. We selected errors to, to be sent to a, to a log analytics uh, workspace destination. So moving on to the Azure Monitor logs. So these allow us to collect, organize log data from multiple sources and make it available for analysis using the Custo query language. So data from different sources can be consolidated in a single workspace in a standard set of tables to hold data such as application requests, exceptions, page views, and so on. Uh, multiple applications can use the same, same workspace. So overall, it's worth noting that the Azure Monitor Logs is based on the Azure Data Explorer. So a log analytics workspace is roughly the equivalent of a database in Azure Data Explorer. Tables are structured the same, and both use the same Custo query language. Here you can see an example of a Azure Monitor log that tracks average CPU usage throughout the last hour. So in conclusion, it is worth highlighting the difference between uh, metrics and logs. So metrics store like numeric data in a time series database, which makes the data more lightweight than the logs and capable of supporting near real time scenarios, making them very useful for alerting, fast detection of issues and so on. So metrics, unfortunately, can I mean, can only store numeric data in a particular structure. So that's a limitation, while logs can store a variety of different data types, each with their own structure. And logs also allow you to perform complex analyses on on logs data using the queries, which cannot be used for, for analysis of metrics data. So overall, looking at Azure Monitor in the in the Azure portal, we can we can claim that uh, the performance impact is very low because it does not consume database resources for monitoring. So telemetry is built in the engine. 
Uh, the sampling frequency is every one minute. The difficulty level for the user is very low. It's very easy to set up, use, given that it's an out-of-the-box Azure portal solution. And pricing depends on the volume and type of data collected and used. So you can, you can look for more details on the Azure Monitor pricing page. So moving onwards, we have the Azure SQL Analytics which helps you identify issues at every layer of your application stack. So under the hood, it uses Azure Diagnostic Metrics along with some Azure Monitor views to present data about your SQL databases in, a, in, a, in only one single uh, log analytics workspace. So here you can see that the performance impact is quite low. It doesn't consume database resources. The telemetry and uh, sampling frequency has an approximate 10 minutes lag. And the, difficult, the difficulty level in this case is moderate um, and the pricing beyond five gigabytes per month of data ingestion is at cost. So Azure SQL Analytics provides two separate views, one for monitoring SQL databases and, one, and the other for monitoring SQL managed instance. So if you select any of these styles, they open a drill down report into that specific uh, perspective. As you can see in the following slide, this is a, this is a drill down um, a report for summaries at the subscription, server, elastic pool, database levels, uh, and you can continue the, the drill down. And we have something similar for the managed instance view, overview, and then the then the drill down where you can see instance utilization, instance databases, data, telemetry on the query is executed across the managed instance. But for a better understanding of what Azure SQL Analytics enables, I'll go back to Ellen for a, for a demo. Fantastic. Uh, thanks, Mara. Yeah, so uh, let's have a look at Azure SQL Analytics. So uh, as Mara mentioned, it's 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 really sort of a centralized place where you can start gathering these diagnostics um, telemetry from an entire data estate, right? So, you know, if you if you look here at this first screen, this is this is a single database that I'm looking at now. Uh, you can see that this database is currently running a workload. Um, it's about a 50 gig uh, database in size, but I can come in and I can sort of view some of the performance overview things uh, when they load. You'll kind of see what are my top uh, resource consuming queries on this specific database. Uh, I don't know why it's loading slow now. There we go. So it's coming up. So you can see here, so I can kind of see what my top CPU consuming queries are, you know, and it will sort of give me this breakdown. Uh, we even do recommendations, right? So we sort of make these intelligent recommendations as I spoke about uh, earlier around how to sort of make these databases faster. The one thing here, though, is is all of these, all of this that you're seeing here, is, is on a single resource level. How does a customer manage something like this if they have, you know, a thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand resources within Azure? And that's where SQL Analytics sort of kind of really uh, comes into its own. So here you can see in this environment, I have six elastic pools. I have about 1,200 individual databases, five managed instances with about 100 databases spread across them. So let's go have a look at this environment. And you can see here exactly as Mara just showed that there is this, um, I don't know why my internet's slow, but there we go, it's loading up now. But you can see exactly as Mara was showing, you can sort of, you can view from a very sort of, you know, like the 10,000 foot view, you can see exactly what's going on in your environment. And this way you don't have to, you know, worry about managing the individual resources on an individual uh, sort of uh, error sort of um, level, but you can ma manage your entire data estate from this like higher up view. And you can at any time, you can come and you can drill down into any of these for example, I can come and I can drill down in the number of errors. And here it will actually show me across multiple subscriptions uh, where the errors are being generated, what servers are generating them. So obviously this database, over, this server over here is generating a, an excess of, um, uh, of errors. So we can actually now come and do a further drill down and we can actually see, you know, what are these errors? And in, in some cases you can even get uh, remediation actions around how can you sort of um, come to resolve this issue. So 
that's really where SQL Analytics has its strengths. One of the downsides to SQL Analytics, unfortunately, is the fact that it is a um, it is a fairly inflexible platform, right? So um, everything you see in SQL Analytics is is fixed. It's fixed to you know the data that we make available at the frequency that we make it available uh, for you to consume. You can't. Uh, necessarily come and do your own graphs or anything like that. The, all the data is available so you can run Kusto queries across it. But the platform that you have access to is is fixed to what we have here. Um, so I'm going to hand back to Mara now, but like hopefully some of what you've seen here will sort of, will sort of uh, excite you for what we're going to be speaking about towards the end of the session. Great. Thank you. So now that we got a broad understanding of Azure monitoring options, let's briefly discuss solutions such as DMVs and X events, extended events. So DMVs return server state information that can be used to monitor the, the health of a server instance, diagnose problems, tune performance. Um, and extended events are uh, more on the lightweight performance monitoring system using minimal performance resources. So overall, there is a performance impact since monitoring queries do consume database resources, the telemetry frequency is real time and manually set, uh, but the difficulty level is higher since custom code development is required and overall these solutions are free. So on the other side, there are uh, multiple other solutions such as uh, Telegraph and uh, on the visualization side, Grafana. In this case, the data sampling ha happens real time and the frequency is manually set. Does consume databases resources for monitoring and the moderate technical skill set is required since the, the user is responsible for, for all the implementation and it's free. Additionally, we have the SCOM management pack for Azure SQL MI. This is best for hybrid on-prem and cloud monitoring. The data sampling frequency is manually set and it does consume databases resources. It has a moderate uh, database administration skill set required to set, to set it up and use. And in terms of pricing, the, the SCOM system is at cost, but this uh, add-on for the managed distance instance management pack is is a free add-on so lastly we'd also like to recognize great third-party monitoring solutions such as redgate sql monitoring solar winds sql sql Sentry one datadog and many others so overall uh, considering the framework that ellen introduced in the beginning around consumption, packaging, storage, collection of monitoring data. So there are some limitations on how much users can configure the, the monitoring data. And these limitations are mostly around the level of configurability and flexibility that users have. For instance, the scale of data, the sampling frequency, the templates used. So we are aware of these limitations and we are trying to constantly innovate the monitoring space and now my colleague Ellen will present you some of our efforts in this area. Fantastic. Thanks, Mara. Um, yeah, so uh, today I'm going to show you some of the new work that we've been working on, right? So we've we've had a look at sort of, you know, traditionally what monitoring is, what customers think monitoring is, and like how it works. And, and we've kind of dealt with some of the things within Azure and where the limitations within the current product set lives within Azure. So, you know, today we're going to look at a very exciting thing, which is sort of the workload insights portion of Azure Monitor. Uh, so there are other products within um, within Azure that have already sort of started releasing some of these, uh, but SQL uh, has sort of really gone down this journey with the Azure Monitor team to really start building a solution uh, that is uh, a lot more value added for customers within the Azure platform than anything we've had before. So sort of if we think about our... Um, our suite all up and we sort of go back to that initial framework really what our customers are, are doing within azure is you have data that that comes from a a source and there are multiple different sources that you can have we happen to be focusing on the sql one here but but really there's you know different environments have different things so you have sql server there's mysql you could have nginx for websites uh, there could be a redis cache for sort of really fast um 
uh, sort of transactions within an environment. You could want to do OS measurements. You might want to look at some of the host te telemetry and then hundreds and hundreds of other options. Now, today within Azure Monitor, within, within the Azure platform, you know, you can monitor a lot of these things uh, to a certain degree in some type of isolation uh, within that environment. But really doing it sort of across a platform is is hard and it takes some kind of skill to do it so this is an area we've really invested in and an area that sql is going to be bringing out some uh, fantastic new features uh, sort of heading into the new year uh, 2021 so really what you have is you have these multiple sources that interact with this thing called the workload insights platform now the workload insight platform as we mentioned above, it has these numerous components in it, right? So there's the collection component, um, which is various different tools around collecting all of this data that you need. Um, there's the storage aspect, like where does this data get saved so that customers can access it and do some type of analytics across it. Because ultimately, I mean, one of the tricks with the SQL, with SQL monitoring in general is the fact that everyone does this differently, right? There is no, one size fits all when it comes to monitoring you as a as an owner of a database and as an owner of an application or whatever it is within your own environment you know what the important things are for you to measure and they differ between environments they differ between customers they differ between clients so they're all different and having a platform that has this extensibility where you know customers can choose how they consume their data customers can choose um, what they do with that data is ultimately where we want to move um, not only sort of from the SQL perspective, but I think sort of generally, you know, across how do I monitor a workload that if you have this customer complaining, instead of instead of having these three different teams that, you know, have to compete with each other around, oh, is it storage? Is it networking? Is it compute? Who's, whose fault is it that this application is slow? You can now have this one place where you have this holistic view of what's actually going on from application uh, all the way through to the end, right? Um, and that's kind of where this packaging piece comes in. So an easy way for you to deploy this within the Azure environment, uh, but also still giving you all the flexibility, which some of the previous solutions uh, just were not built to do. Okay, so let's take a deeper look at this, uh, the Workload Insights platform, right? So as, as, as I mentioned before, you have these kind of, these, these major components that we wanted to build into the platform to really make it easy and extensible for customers uh, to use it as well as sort of customize how they use all of these things. So the first piece we look at is the packaging piece, right? So how do you deploy it? How can you use it? And how does it integrate within the Azure platform? So for any service to be easy to use, it has to integrate with the existing platform uh, standards, right? So you can create an ARM template to deploy these things, uh, to set them up, to configure them. Uh, terraforming will work off the back of the ARM APIs. Um, and then within the Azure Marketplace, uh, you'll also be able to deploy uh, this uh, new way of collecting data. So really what you have here is you have a new system that allows customers to choose how and when they want to monitor their own environment, right? So what we do is we actually go and customers can choose how they do this. And I'll show in the demo how we've gone about this is you can deploy these agents within your database and you can set up data collection rules for these agents around how they go and they pull data from SQL and then how they actually uh, use that data and centralize that data so that you can interrogate that data and sort of do the visualizations and the consumption of that data um, in a way that makes sense to you, right? So what we have is, is we have the Azure monitoring agent, uh, which has this uh, workload insights collection service. Now, one of the things that we've done here is we've actually built the Telegraph agent, which some of you might be familiar with. It is a very popular open source um, uh, telemetry gathering tool. Uh, we have built the SQL monitoring portions of Telegraph into the extensibility framework of this workloads inside collector. So anything that is part of that open source repository, we can now collect from a SQL database and we can go and store natively inside of Azure and customers can go and interrogate this. And this platform, the workloads inside collection service is extensible. So today we might have Telegraph 
uh, as a base uh, for collecting some of this data. But as we kind of mature this product and we want to start looking at different things, like how can I potentially start collecting logs? Because Telegraph is very metric centric. How can I start collecting logs or how can I start collecting um, X events or these things? We can add additional extensions uh, onto this platform. And that's really the sort of one of the unique benefits that we have here. And then ultimately what you sort of get is you have um, these sort of like governing um, controls over the top of them where you as an end user can choose how do you want this data collected and who has access to this data and what data is collected. So we have these things called workload data collection rules and workloads per virtual machine. So basically all that is, is, is within the Azure platform. And again, I'll show you this when I get to the demo, you can set up these things called DCRs or data collection rules where you can specify what data has to be collected for a specific environment and, and, you know, which agents are responsible for collecting it and what the frequency of the collections are. So, you know, you can really have a policy based application of how you go about collecting this data from your SQL environment, because imagine you had a, a data estate where you had a production, a, a dev and a, and a UAT environment. The way you collect data across those three environments is not the same. Uh, and what you do with that data at the end of the day is not the same necessarily. So, for example, in your production environment, you might want to store certain data for extended amounts of time so that you can do some type of uh, uh, sort of time based uh, analysis on how your resource consumption is changing. But in your dev environment, you might not care to keep data for, you know, 90 days or 120 days you might only want to keep it for five days in case there's a problem right now um, and that can all be done sort of from the dcrs without having to do it per vm per database or per deployment type right then we sort of give you the option of storage so today your options are you can either stream the data into log analytics or into azure metrics and from there, you can then interrogate that data using KQL. So you have access to all of this data. And if you kind of think back to what I said earlier about there's this difference between front end and back end data. Now, because all of this is deploying in your environment, you have access to all of this data. So you can do with this data whatever you want, which is very different from you know some of the traditional ways that we've served up data uh, in Azure. And then lastly, you have this consumption piece, uh, which is you know, running insights across it, like how does, how do you get value from this data? Now that takes two forms. You can either have insights that you have designed yourself, right? So you understand your workloads better than we ever will. So if you sort of have these insights into your workloads using KQL, you can go and create these insights now on top of your data, uh, your telemetry. Um, and you can surface those up through Azure. You can alert on top of those. Um, and that's kind of where the analytics piece comes. So like, how do you add value in this environment? And then sort of the onboarding piece, very important. You have to have an easy way to onboard, you know, 10,000 databases, 100,000 databases, and sort of drive everything from a policy perspective. And then um, all of this is visualized through custom workbooks. So when this product comes out in sort of the beginning of 2021 there will be a set of pre-canned experiences so you know ux that customers can experience and i'm going to show you some of that now and how you would visualize some of these things but ultimately at the end of the day these um workbook experiences are completely customizable so if you want to change the graphics if you want to if you want to change the time frequency of these um of the visualizations that are there you have the full flexibility to do all of that now where you know in some of the previous solutions you you didn't have that that flexibility um and then obviously uh being part of the azure monitor set you now have the ability to alert on top of this data right so you can now go and create custom alerts again similar to the dashboards we'll have a set of uh, pre-canned alerts that 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 you can use in your environment things like measuring cpu looking at how kind of uh you know whatever those alerting um thresholds are for you you can go and set those up on top of this data set now so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to jump straight into uh the demo for this um and here what you're going to see is very similar to what we saw with SQL Analytics, right? Now you can sort of see 
what the scope that I'm managing is. The big difference here is, is um, one of the things I mentioned in the beginning of the talk was the fact that, you know, there's a, there is a disparity between the data that gets collected across different deployment types, right? So SQL VM or SQL virtual machines differs from, you know, managed instance, and that differs from SQL databases, for example. One of the things we've really tried to drive within this new solution is having a single place where customers can ma can monitor their entire environment, right? So you don't have to monitor manage instances separately from databases, separately from your SQL servers. Um, the other big advantage that you have here, which uh, we didn't, uh, we, which we kind of haven't previously had a lot of solutions for was you now have the ability to use this uh, telemetry gathering agent to actually get data from uh, SQL running inside of a virtual machine. And you can now stream that to log analytics, which means you can now get the same type of insights for your for your infrastructure based deployments as you have uh, for your platform based deployments. Um, and for anyone who's kind of used virtual machines, they'll understand that that's, you know, that's quite a big thing because traditionally we haven't streamed a lot of this telemetry uh, out of the virtual machines into the back end. And that's purely because, you know, the virtual machines belong to customers. You own the OS, you own the host, you own all of those things. So, so that it's always been very difficult for us to stream that data out. But now using this, you know, you sort of explicitly tell this monitoring agent to go and pull these DMVs and stream it in. So you can start correlating SQL Server deployments with managed instances with uh, Azure SQL database deployments. And here you can see very similar to what we saw in um, the SQL Analytics workspace, where we can start now seeing things like how are the resources being utilized in this environment across what is now a very complex environment, essentially. Um, and the, the big advantage that you get here is, is that you as the end user can choose what all of this is. So how does this present up to you? What are the frequencies that you're looking at? What's the scope of what you're looking at, right? Like, do you want to isolate down to a, to a single uh, um, subscription? You can choose what the time range is of the frequencies here. They can be custom. And you can go and see any of the queries that are fueling these graphs so that you can go and either customize them or, you know, use them for other type of alerting purposes. The sort of other major advantages is that we know that there is a large set of customers out there that, that kind of have, uh, that use some of the open set, uh, open source tools that are available. So things like uh, uh, Grafana and Telegraph get used quite often. Uh, the Azure Monitor, uh, Azure Monitor actually has native integrations now with uh, Grafana. So, for example, if you're comfortable with Grafana as a visualization engine, you can still choose to use this new um, telemetry uh, gathering agent of ours in Azure and then just use Grafana within your own environment to visualize all of the data that's now sitting uh, in the back end. So you wouldn't even have to change there. And then just sort of very quickly, as I said, this is this is all built on top of the open source um, Telegraph agent that's available today. Um, we continue to make contributions into this um, repository all the time, but you can see here just by reading through some of these um, metrics that we gather using Telegraph that there is a far more robust set of um, metrics that will, that you can now have access to that you previously didn't have access to uh, on any of the platform based deployments um within azure uh, within azure um and then just sort of the very last thing i i will kind of try cover here is is um again you can see here that here we are monitoring across multiple different um deployment types. So you have managed instances, you have Azure SQL running on top of virtual machines. And these are those, uh, those monitoring profiles that I was talking about, the data collection rules. So you could have different rules within your organization that determine what data is being monitored, uh, how it's being monitored. And the application of those is completely up to you. So you could have a policy-based application of, of how data gets monitored within your, monitored within your environment. I don't know why that one's taking long to load, but let's see if one of the others will. Oh, that one's got nothing, but we'll see. But 
that's kind of the, the and here you can see so this could be different this could be a different scope for a different user that's monitoring something different and you can create these new profiles and then just the the sort of the very last thing that i want to show is just uh some of the onboarding pieces right so you can see just by kind of having a look here at some of the more drilled down data you know we looked at the very high level things which look similar to sql analytics previously but here you have some of the more sort of drill down things you can now start seeing you know resource informations if you want uh you can start seeing memory clerks here across environments uh this multiple managed instances uh weight stats become available uh and then just finally the onboarding experience is also we try to make that as easy as possible because imagine you had to try and onboard 10,000 databases you want that to be easy you want that to be simple you don't want that to be a complex process for you so here again you just you have this agent which you can then configure to monitor a number of SQL instances right so you would just provide it with a username and a password and essentially just a full connection string and that agent is then capable of connecting I mean our roadmap here for this tool is you know we're gonna we're gonna continue to work on this we're gonna start bringing in some of the logs some of the x events and then really start building on top of that value that we've had uh you know sort of on the single database level around things like um you know making performance-based recommendations for customers um and that's just sort of a very uh brief sort of look through some of the things that we're working on at the moment uh, within the monitoring space. Uh, we're very excited about some of the things that are going to be coming out. Uh, that product that we just showed, which is Workload Insights, will be uh, going into preview in the sort of the first half of 2021. Um, and we hope that, that everyone is as excited about it as we are, uh, just to kind of cover some of the major benefits that you're going to, that you're going to get here because Workload Insights is running on top of the standard Azure monitoring platform. Um, and it uses the, the default workbooks, uh, essentially one of the big advantages you're going to get is you're going to start being able to do cross service correlations. So some of those scenarios where you can start correlating things like storage and, you know, throttling events to database performance. Um, again, the cross deployment options is a big one. You can now start uh, gathering and monitoring infrastructure and platform based deployments in the same way uh, across your environment. Um, we allow for user defined frequency. So you get to choose how frequently you monitor um, the data. That can be anything from, you know, 15 seconds to 10 minutes depending on the environment, right? Like, as I said earlier, if you had a development in a production environment, you wouldn't necessarily monitor those the same, um, purely because it just doesn't make sense for you to sort of have super robust monitoring in an environment that is probably doesn't need it all the time. Um, you have this concept of having user-defined collection profiles, so you can kind of manage who sees what and, and how that data gets presented up, uh, depending on, um, the different profiles that you can set up and again you have this freedom of choice right so you can choose what gets deployed right while it won't necessarily be in the in the initial release uh early next year um you know further down the line we will be we will give you the option to potentially sort of do um custom monitoring queries or at least filter out what gets gathered versus what doesn't get gathered. Um, there are already examples of some additional variables that a customer could choose to monitor, which are not available on all the options. We will have a, um, a pre-built um, set of alerts for customers. So, you know, sort of out of the box alerts that any customer can use within the environment. Again, because they're all based on top of uh, data that you have access to and that lives in your environment, you get to create the thresholds and decide what those thresholds look like in your environment. Um, the, the intelligence pieces, as we mentioned earlier, this is definitely an area that we're going to continue to invest in. We're going to continue to bring some of these uh, sort of uh, smarter monitoring solutions out. But again, one of the big advantages with this new solution is because all the data is now accessible and because you now have access to all this data easily, 
uh, there's nothing that prevents you from building your own intelligence that is suited to your workloads in this environment. Um, and then automation, right? So because this is all part of the, the Azure platform, you have the ability to, you know, create some very complex end-to-end -end scenarios where, you know, if a certain threshold is alerted on, you could have something like um, Azure Automation use that to go and do something. So almost have an auto mitigation, right? Like they, these things now become possible now that you have this ability to kind of complete the, the chain for an end-to-end -end monitoring solution. And then just the last thing is one of the big things that we've been trying to drive here is just, you know, we, we understand that, you know, some of the previous solutions have been uh, restrictive in a sense in that, you know, it's, it's all about what data has been available to you and how frequently that gets available to you. But now with this new solution, we're really sort of saying to customers, well, any data you want as often as you want it, we're giving all of that to you and you can choose what you do with it now. So how you monitor your environment can be as custom or as manual or automated as you need it to be uh, to suit your workloads. And with that, that brings us to the end of our session today. Uh, just a special thanks to uh, all of our sponsors for DPS. It's a fantastic event. Um, thanks for attending today. I hope you learned something. We look forward to uh, this community's continued engagement on on some of these new monitoring solutions that we're working on. Um, and then just very lastly, um, there's a prize. If you take a selfie of yourself and you post it with the hashtag DPS2020, there are some prizes you can win, I suppose. Um, and then if you are interested in seeing what other Microsoft sessions are available um, at DPS, you can go to the uh, the sort of the short URL there, which is aka.ms backslash Microsoft at DPS. And you can get a full list of all my colleagues and Mara's colleagues uh, that'll be speaking at DPS as well. I uh, hope you have a fantastic conference and thanks for tuning into the session. Thank you.